doing, but it's Red Bull, Monster Energy drinks, or any of those things, because as you start filling it, they have a, what is it, taurine in it? It's T A U R N E, which does, it does mix well, my friends tell me, with vodka. Well, yeah, I mix with vodka, but the problem is, it's also, it's, um, it's basically, it's a double negative. It's got, it's caffeine and it's sugar. You don't want to add, you don't want, the caffeine is to keep you going, but the sugar, unfortunately, hyper-energizes the alcohol content. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you're taking something to negate what the alcohol is doing, and generally, one doesn't really go well with the other. And it does keep you up all night. It keeps you up all night, but you're also going to more than likely the next day going to end up with your head over a toilet. Well, because you're mixing, you're mixing sugar with caffeine. There's a, okay, uh, what is it? And for some of you that have a sensitive heart, I know. Here right. is a tablespoon. I don't, okay, so we're going to try this with a Red Bull. This is an empty container without any like that. Take one tablespoon sugar, take two tablespoons sugar, take three tablespoons okay, sugar, okay. take four so tablespoons sugar. Here's my trick on Red Bull, is if you're used to Red Bulls, okay, enjoy. If you're not used to Red Bulls, just have a little bit. Yeah. I wouldn't take any. I wouldn't. He take wouldn't any, take any. I wouldn't I, take energy. I do. It keeps you up longer. Well, I know, but I'm, I'm going to start rolling after midnight. So there. Well, that's a, your system's totally different than everybody else's. I used to like to go out at night. I don't get to go out at night anymore. But if you have one of those, that's not something you take an hour or two hours before you go to sleep. You expect to be up at least another four or five hours plus. Yeah. 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 So um, figure the if the party start at nine, most of them don't end until after two. Yeah. So, um, like I said, uh, which is funny because you think of taking it as you go longer into the night. If you take it longer in the night, you're not going to be able to sleep. Yeah, and um, you can, um, like I said, if you're going to get something else, at, uh, here's the problem: is, is uh, don't drink milk products after you start drinking. It will curdle on your stomach. Oh. Don't eat. Don't eat ice cream. Don't have cottage cheese, anything. Don't eat cheese. They curdle on your stomach. Oh, really? They always thought serve cheeses or drinks. No, it's a But curdle. they have wine and cheese. That's not, that's a different thing. Wine is, okay. Wine, if you go to a thing that's serving straight wine, most people very seldom get drunk on straight wine. Okay. But you're also not eating just cheese. You're having crackers and other mm -hmm. things to go with them. It's not, it's not only cheese, but alcohol, alcohol, any dairy product will curdle in your stomach. So basically, you you know, this is why if you've got to have, like, cut buttermilk, you do it before you get there. If you eat butter, you're going to have a butter thing. Do it before you get there because you want to coat things. Once it's coated, you basically put a wall between, the, okay, it works, alcohol works by osmosis. The alcohol leaves you no matter what. You know, the, the liquid in the alcohol goes, but the alcohol stays in the blood cells. What you want to do is you want to stop it with the butter stuff in order to keep it as much from getting in as you possibly can. And, um, but it only works once. You can't go to a party and say, in about, you know, say about three hours, I think I'll have some more stuff with butter on it. Well, no, because butter, this is butter. Butter is made from milk. Mm -hmm. it, it will curdle on, it will curdle because you're putting it into a coated area and adding alcohol on top of it. They don't go together. And the way, it's the same difference if it's a non-coated area and you've been drinking, you then have an alcohol barrier between you and the protection, so it will curdle it. You will end up over a toilet. Mm -hmm. and, um, and another thing, if you think that, well, I, I've got the really horrible headache, I'm going to go get myself a whole bunch of caffeine, caffeine is not going to help you. Caffeine, you know why they give people lots of coffee? And, and, okay, okay, here's a good, okay, you ever seen them? They give, you know, they give you the, like the coffee, they put an egg in it, they put tap Tabasco sauce, they put all this in it, you know why they do that? What? Guess what it does to your stomach? What? You head to the toilet real quickly. Oh! Yeah. It makes you throw up and get it out of your oh, system. Oh, you get it out of your system so that yeah. you're better. So but if they offer you one of these, don't take it, but say you've been drinking, you know, you're really wobbly in the morning, Go take another drink or whatever it was you were drinking at night. That will steady it off. They'll steady it. They will steady it's it off. It's not like an alcoholic, which is what they do. Well, no, but if you're going to go out, I'm just telling you how... You're gonna, how to survive it. It's survive it because you don't want... I mean, well, she'll know. I work, for instance, I work, I work all night long, so I survive on really crappy tea. 
I mean, it's the best god awful tea in the world you can buy. My coffee is the best tea, you, the best coffee you can buy, but it's revolting to my stomach. And the next morning, I have a head like you would not believe. I get caffeine. You headaches. have caffeine overs. I have caffeine overs, so that's another thing. You can drink too much. You say you're, uh, here's another one. I mean, she actually does do Shirley Temples, so. So she does lots of Shirley Temples. But I drink, I drink really hard alcohol. <laughs> I can drink, 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 drink. I've never actually been drunk, so I've got all old. I've never been drunk. Mm -hmm. But I do know that, for instance, you go to a, you want to just go to a party. I, my, my better side, Angelique, couldn't drink either. You know, really, oh, she couldn't? No, oh, she could she not. Could. No, well, she drank beer like it was water. Yeah, it's insane. No, there's a difference oh. between hard alcohol and beer. You go to an event, a New Year's event. They don't, a lot of them don't serve out, don't serve beer. They serve champagne. They serve champagne, which she really, like, I can guarantee you, the first night I went out, I, we, I, we took her to Disney and got up. She wanted one of these big, oh, what's that cute little thing? A big mango champagne. Well, I discovered she didn't drink well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I seen her. We'd go out to a Hofbrau and we'd drink beer. We'd just picture after picture after picture because she was German and Japanese. The Japanese side could not handle the alcohol. And she's about this tall anyway, 90 some pounds. Yes, yeah, so I didn't, I mean. So, but um, she would basically, uh, uh, her idea was, I'm just going to drink. I'm going to get over this real quick. You know, and she'd go, when, you know, she'd get a pot of coffee, you know, she'd go over and put this on, you know, and then she'd and then, and then, oh, oh she'd go, oh. You know, and that she'd be, you know, and she'd end up, you know, after, she'd drink this whole thing, and by the time she got through it, she'd go, Oh, before she just had Hetty. So then I said, go, you know, go go into the cabinet and bring out something or whatever she was drinking, pour it in the thing. I said, now drink that. She said, but it make me throw up. I said, you can't write. <laughs> she'd go, <laughs> she'd go in there. This does not help you with a hangover, folks. It just makes you sick. <laughs> so that's not a good thing to drink. So, um, okay, this is not scientific. This is the fact. I am from a zillion generations of people that drink a lot. One of my, okay, one of my family members helped to form Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> yeah, so I do know about alcohol. And um, my mother couldn't drink. Angelique couldn't drink. My sisters could not drink. My brother could not drink. But God, can I drink? I, I inherited the, uh, I sort of leaked. Over you you inherited the drinking gene? I enjoyed the try and the drinking. And she knows it. And actually, see, part of it is, is the more he drinks, the more serious he gets. I know. And that is not most people. No. Okay, we're going to, we're going to say this, but, um, okay, how old am I? I actually was in school with Richard Petty at one time in my life. And a lot of you are going, who's Richard Petty? Oh, the king of NASCAR, folks. <laughs> okay, we did this thing way, way back. And Richard Petty is not quite that good old boy as you think he is, folks. So we did a thing, and um, you know, we were the two oldest. We both, okay, he had been driving since he was about like that. I had been driving since I was about like that, too. We tractors and things like that. And um, and they said, well, the two oldest kids, let's, let's show how alcohol, but you know, because they, they, they said, Petty, you, 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 your daddy's a moonshiner. And, well, yeah, and they said, and kid, you're, you're, your father, basically, you're German. You've been drinking since you were like this. They said, yeah, so they, they can, they know what the stuff, they didn't want kids to drink, so they put us in the car on a, on a track. And um, he's getting better the more I drink. Mm -hmm. The more I drink. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, that didn't work. <laughs> yeah. It did not have any effect on either one of us back then. You know, it, it works. I, I also saw the thing years later when we were doing, um, I was doing a thing uh, for a local TV station. We went over to one of the, the high schools, uh, we went over, I think, to in, uh, we went over to Encino, uh, no, um, it's Inglewood, okay, because that's where my, my aunt Corky was in Inglewood. We went over to high school and they got the Highway Patrol taking, we're filming, you know, a race car. This was really brilliant. They got themselves one of the unzers over there. And he's going to show you the evils of drinking. Oh. Well, that didn't work either, folks, because the Enzer could drink like a fish. And he, you know, he thought he was driving well at the beginning. You know, they had the cones. He, he clipped some cones at the beginning. The more he drank, you know, the... <laughs> and they said, well, that didn't work. And I, I discovered over all the years I've been alive, those tests never work. Those examples, all they do is approve the kid. God, they, if they can drink and drive, so can I. <laughs> it doesn't work. 
because some people's systems are totally different than other people and they can drink and you're not supposed to drink and drive but I know a person that can take 15, 16 you know, Bloody Mary's in a row and go out and pass the breathalyzer test. <laughs> well, yeah, because the body processes it differently. Yeah. And it all has to do with that. Because see, part of it is no matter what you can or can't, if you get stopped and they test you for your alcohol content in your body, yep. and, and you're above a certain level, that's it. Rule one, that 99 and 99% of the people cannot pass a breathalyzer test if they've had one drink. One. So if you catch you with one, you basically almost, you, you, have, you have a reading that depending upon your body size, you push from the alcohol content. Two, and, and it's a very expensive ticket. Yeah, two, you cannot beat the breathalyzer. Because basically... Uh, you mean holding a penny in your mouth, sucking on it won't help? Uh, cough drops, menthol cough drops, there is nothing in the world that can, can beat the breathalyzer. Here's a trick. Well, I took a menthol, I don't understand why. Because the menthol shows up as alcohol. Um, oh yeah, there is alcohol in it. Right? Yeah. And, uh, and here's part of it is, even if you're not legally drunk, if you're still driving like you're drunk, uh, you can still get a ticket. Yeah, and if you, uh, <laughs> you might not get a ticket for a drunk driving, and, and, but you can still get a ticket. And they do this bit, you know, and uh, I can sit there and do that a hundred times out of a hundred times. Really? Or I can, oh, I I can sit there and then, okay. I know, I'm sitting there wondering if I can even do it with... <laughs> yeah, and then the, here's the problem too, is one of the standard tests is walking a line. One of my legs is shorter than the other leg. Right. So she knows that I ought, I limp all the time. I've limped all my life. So when you're, you know, when you're walking, you're, you're basically doing, and basically, you know, because the one leg is shorter, it always causes me a Right, because you have to walk one instead of the other. Well, the other part is with females, when you're in heels, you can't sit there and walk like that. You have to take the heels off. Most of them won't take the heels off. You're you're heels. Women don't wear ho as much hose today. Women did not used to take their heels off because they didn't want to wear their hose. hose. Nowadays, they don't wear heels, so that a lot of them will walk, walk the walk. But, um, but like I said, a physical, uh, there's nothing wrong. You know, I was basically, I wasn't born with anything. I basically, I got dropped off a building when I was little and basically it did some damage to my side and ended up with, you know, one, a, one leg is just, just the, but what happened was the leg is the right size, I smashed my feet. And one foot is a little bit flatter than, I got two flat feet, one foot is a little flatter than the other one. And it causes me to limp. And that limp alone can get you screwed at a, at, at, at a thing. I mean, I can remember, Give an example. My father was a, my father would do traffic control on on the holidays thing. They would call everybody out, mm -hmm. and I, I happened to come through one of my father's check stands, and basically, and he said, "Boy, this kid is really in bad shape." And then my father said, "That's my son, and one leg is shorter than the other leg." And they said, "It is." And he said, "He doesn't look like it." And they said, um, "He said, okay." Ask him to do all the other things. So I'm going like this and like that. And every test that they could do, a passing. And he said, yeah, but he didn't pass that one. And he said, because. And then the, my father, sergeant, came by and said, what well, is goddamn leg? Just shorter than the other leg. He can't walk, you know, in a straight line without buckling a little bit. And I said, well, we didn't, nobody told us about that problem. And he said, well, now you know. Now you know. If you have a person with a disability, he might not be able to walk the straight line. <laughs>